Recursion is one of those things that you learn in school that you don't really see a heck of a lot in the real world, unless you're doing some really low stuff like, uh, I don't know, tree traversals, file system searches, things like that. Um, so it, it kind of shocks you. It kind of comes out of left field when you have to use it at work. So I've been a software engineer for a few years now, maybe like four years or something like that. And I can count on one hand, maybe two hands, how many times I've had to use recursion at my job. Um, and I've worked at a few different companies now too, so that's saying something. Um, and today was one of those days. I had to use recursion today. And I mean, you, you never really forget it. It's kind of like riding a bike. Um, once you get back to it, then it's totally fine. Uh, but that kind of inspired me to make a video today about this. I haven't made a video in a while, and I realized I didn't have a, rec uh, a recursion video. So here we go. Let's do it. I'm going to be using factorials as an example today. And the notation for that is just an exclamation mark. So if you have 5 factorial, you just have 5 exclamation mark. Um, if you break that down, it's something like 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So it's just a countdown. And you're multiplying every single number on the way down from that countdown. So if you have like 3 factorial, that's just 3 times 2 times 1. If you were to take the iterative approach to a factorial, I'm going to just write some pseudocode here. So if you had your function factor, there's my thought, factorial n. n is just an integer, by the way. I've been doing a lot of JavaScript lately, so I'm <laughs> not fully used to writing my uh, variable types. Uh, anyway, n is an integer. And if we're going to use our example from before, then that's going to be 5. And it's going to be 5. You would have a variable up here. Let's just call this int, I don't know, fact. And we'll initialize it to 1. And then we'll have a for loop. Another int i. We'll start this guy at 1. And we will go up until n. I mean, at this point, you can probably figure out where this is going. If I'm counting up and my iterator starts at 1, then I can really just do 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, and then shove that into my fact variable. Lots and lots of control Z. There we go. So let's do that. Fact will be equal to itself. So on the first iteration, it will be 1 times. And we're going to do i. So on the first iteration, it'll be 1 times 1. And then when i goes up, fact will be 1, because 1 times 1 equals 1. And i will be 2 here. And then i will be 3 here, 4 here five here. This one comes here. One times two is two. So then that comes here. Two times three, six. Six times four. Six times four is twenty-four. And then twenty-four times five is hundred and twenty. So once we get through our entire for loop, we should end up with the number 120. It'll stop at five. So we have five iterations here. Our n is equal to five. Uh, Where's my pink? We can return fact. So then if we call this, um, you know, if we do like a print statement or something like that, then this will print 120. Now, for those of you who don't really know what recursion is, it's um, uh, 
it's really just a function that calls itself. So if we have a function that calls itself five times, and just for the sake of it, we'll call it func. Inside the call of this function, we call that one, it calls itself. And then that one calls itself. And then that one calls itself. And if we're doing it five times, that one calls itself. Traditionally, with recursion, you're not using any code from outside the function. So in the case of our iterative function here, you wouldn't use anything other than n. That's the only variable you have access to. So let's start again here. We've got function factorial n. And I forgot that it's an int again. We need to start by figuring out how we want this to work. Recursion is at its core an iteration. So if we had an iteration with our for loop here and we went one, two, three, four, five during our iteration, but with the recursion, we only have access to n, which means that n is five, right? That means that our countdown will have to be five, four, three, two, one. And if we're only using code inside this function, how do you tell the function that keeps calling itself when to stop? You have to use n. Use n as your index. So in the iterative function, your index would be i. Here, you're using n as both the fact variable and as i. You can tell the function when to stop by using something called the base case. And this is your most basic instruction. For us, it's going to be the end of the countdown. So once this thing hits 1, we want it to return 1. So at the top, we can just say if n is equal to 1, then return 1. Next up is the, oh shoot, I lost my drawing tools. Next up is the recursive case. This is the meat of the function. So this is where the multiplication is going to happen. Inside of our iterative function, that would be that line. In our iterative function, we did fact times i, and we made fact equal to itself that way. We're doing pretty much the exact same thing here, except that we're telling the function factorial what it is returning, what it itself is equal to. So we'll start the return statement here. Um, oh, I hope it's actually clear that this is not part of the if statement. So we're going to return n, remember in our iterative function fact here, times the index. Remember, we're using n as our index as well. But because this thing's not counting down yet, we need to make it count down. It really it wouldn't make much sense if we just did this though, because this isn't going to do much of anything. This would, if n is five, this were, would return five times five minus one. So this would just do five times four, which is good. That's the first step, but we need it to keep going. And the way that we do that is by just calling the function again. And this is the recursion. And I don't have enough room here, so I'm just going <laughs> to write it down here. 
no, I feel weird about this. I'm going to fix that. And there you go. You have your recursive function. Um, this probably is still a little bit confusing just because you haven't seen it work. So I'm going to take you through this whole thing step by step. And then we'll go into code and we'll see it in action. All right, so let's say that your call is just this simple print function here. Your first run through and is going to be equal to five, so it's not going to hit the base case yet. It'll skip right over that and it'll go right to the recursive case. So then we are, uh, let's say we're in the function factorial five, right? This is going to return five times factorial four. 4 because that's n minus 1. But oh, we're calling the function again. So the computer is going to go through this all over again. We skip over the base case, but this time our n is 4. So we return 4, because that's n now, times factorial three and oh we're calling the function again n is three now though so that next call returns three times factorial two n is now two factorial one and oh we hit our base case, so return one. Okay, so now what? What does this mean? Well, now the computer is going to go all the way back up the chain, and I need a new color for this. Okay, so. We're at the bottom right now. It returns one. That means that this function, that function call returns one. So now you have two times one, which is three. We're returning that. Two times one is three. Oh geez, I'm sorry, it's not three, it's late. It's two. So two, because two times one is two, not three. <laughs> three times two is six. So that means that when we return it, that's going to be six. Four times six is 24. So when we return that, it's 24. So then our original call is going to return five times 24, which is 120. And yeah, that's a four. My tablet glitches out sometimes. So the big question right now, I think, is which one is better, iterative or recursive? And honestly, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, if you're a software engineer and you're working, I would suggest going iterative. It's usually more readable, usually easier to understand. If you're in a situation where you have to use recursion, obviously use it. But if you're just like a try-hard edgelord who wants to prove that they can do recursion, it doesn't really belong in the workplace. Just do what's legible, what will be maintainable, what other people will understand. In most cases, regardless of what you use, the compiler will figure it out and use what is the most performant. So a lot of people will say, oh, recursion is not as performant as the iterative approach because of stack space and such and such. Modern compilers don't really care. Uh, they're both pretty much as performant regardless. Uh, this might depend on context. I haven't done C in a while, so maybe in C it's different, but usually you can get away with just doing the iterative approach. 
Okay, last but not least, this is what it looks like in C sharp. So you have your factorial function with your n integer. This looks pretty much exactly like what we did. I changed things up a little bit. I put the recursive case first inside of an if statement, and then the base case is taken care of by an else. So the gist of it is, is that as long as n is above one, then we'll do the multiplication. And if it is equal to one, then we return one. And that is our base case. If I run this now, you'll see that the printout is 120. All right, and that is it. I hope that was helpful to someone out there. And um, we'll catch you in the next video in like a year <laughs> or whatever, or whenever the next time I'll be making a video is. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, seriously, it's, it's kind of nice that there's still people looking at these after so long. So I appreciate it. Anyway, uh, happy studying, happy coding, and we'll see you in the next video.